Hi, my name's Ed Padgett. I'm a hobbyist digital artist that goes by the nickname Rough Dog Online. You can find me online at various places like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And I have my own website now, roughdog.co.uk. And I'll put all the various links underneath this video. And um, the reason why I'm making this is that I've made a few um, previous time-lapse art videos on YouTube. And I've had a few comments from people asking me to share more slowly how I actually do my artwork and the steps that I take. Um, first of all, I have quite a technical approach to it. Um, I have the same routine for every painting that I do and I follow the same steps and a lot of those come from traditional drawing which I've been doing most of my life. I moved over to Art Rage and purely digital painting about two years ago um, and I'd like to think I made quite a few big steps since then which is very cool and awesome and it's mostly thanks to this Art Rage software that I found a couple of years ago which I highly recommend for anybody. Now this first video is just going to be talking about the very basics of how I draw. So these are the first three steps and it's not really going to be going into any of the detailed painting. It's talking about laying foundations to then get to the actual real meat of painting. So these first three steps for me are doing the proportion line work, then doing the full pencil sketch on top of that, and then breaking the image down into basic layers. And before we go any further and actually get on with that, I'm just going to quickly talk about the, the um, setup that I have. So I do all my painting on a Mac on 10.9. I use ArtRage 4 software. And in terms of actually what I paint with, I use a Wacom Intuos 5 tablet. And I highly recommend to anybody out there that um, if you're a beginner and you're looking to get into this, I highly, highly recommend you get yourself a tablet. Uh, because um, as far as I'm concerned, a mouse or a trackpad, just don't cut it. Um, you don't have to get a very expensive one. Intuos uh, tablets are more expensive. There's ones that go past that. But if you want to start for fresh and you start from new, I highly recommend you just get yourself a um, sort of beginner level tablet. Uh, Wacom make a range called Bamboo, which are very good. That's what I started with. And um, they're very, very good tablets for their price. So you, can, you don't have to pay lots of money to get going on this sort of thing. Um, and what we're going to be doing today is Going back over one of my older paintings, um, I'm just going to quickly show you the final product. I made, did this painting in um, 2013. It's a portrait painting of a model called Rebecca, Rebecca Flower. Um, she let me do a painting of her. Um, thank you. And this is a, a very close-up portrait painting. Or I would say a good 99% of my paintings are portrait in the last few years. And um, I did this one because it's very close up, let me do a lot of detail, particularly in things like the eyes and the mouth and the, the face and all that sort of area. And that's why I did this one. Also, I love the colour in it. And I decided to go with this. And um, what I'm going to do is go over how I did how I did this painting and we're going to go over it step by step. Um, and today's video is just going to be covering the first steps. Let's get rid of that. So I'm going to open up this document called Proportions. And what we're going to do is just take a look at um, the steps that I take. First thing I'm going to do is go to an area called Tools and load up this thing called a reference image. And this is the original photo. Resize that. OK. And the original camp, the original proportion of the photo itself is tri is a, a square, and um, so that's what I've done. Now, what I always do first of all is take a look at the um, pixel size of a photo of the photo I'm working from, and put that directly into ArtRage. When I create a new canvas, you get asked what's the width and height in pixels, and I'll put the same values into the canvas as I would the original photo. That helps me maintain the correct, correct proportions of the canvas to start with. And then what I'll also do, the next step, is to work out where the centre is. And the easiest way to do that if, um, is to basically just draw a line from corner to corner and just create this kind of basic, you know, triangular you know, cross in the middle, basically. Uh, the next step I've taken on this image, just to go over it, is I've created a line coming down the centre of the face. And the, the, this does two things for me. First of all, it starts laying out a map. First of all, Rebecca's face in this photo is ever so slightly tilted to one side can't really see it unless you really look but her head is actually quite significantly tilted to one side when you look at it and 
that's the main purpose of this line is to show me the angle of her face but it's also to sort of start laying out where her face is on the canvas so it's pretty much down the middle we see the line pretty much goes over the center of the canvas and the other two lines that I've added is first of all the line coming across her eye line and what I use for the eye line for reference is the pupils I go by the pupils where they are um, and that's showing me not only the position roughly vertically where the eyes are, it's also the angle of the eyes, because obviously if she's tilting her head, our eyes are going to be slightly off balance. And this small line at the bottom here, which is um, the bottom, is a chin of her face. So these three lines already are laying uh, out a lot of where things should go on the canvas. And the whole point of proportions is to break the image down into basic shapes and lines. And when you're doing this, you're comparing all the various little details on the photo to each other. Like, for example, looking at the photo, her eye is pretty much parallel with her knuckle on the canvas. So if I open up the next layer, you'll see that the eye line and this shape here, which is the outline of her hand, are pretty much on the same level there. So what I've done in this next layer is, um, first of all, I've broken her face down into kind of two basic ge geometric shapes. I've got the top half of her face broken down into a pure circle. You'll see that there. I've used a circular tool there and just drawn a perfect circle around there. And then the bottom half of the face is almost like a triangle. So the circle at the top and then the chin at the bottom there and these two lines either side, that is laying out the sort of shape of the chin or the jawline, whatever that might be. And then I've got these other lines that represent the outlines of her two hands. And then the lines coming along the top here, which show the shape of her hood that she's wearing and her shoulders either side there. Open up the next layer, the final layer on this document. And we've, we see now the kind of basic shape of her hairline coming down one side of her face. We've got the eyebrows, which make her look very angry right now. We've got her mouth line, so I go, I'm go. i going by the center line running through the across her mouth there, corner to corner of her mouth. And then I've got her nose, the bottom of her nose. And a, um, a traditional drawing tip is to work out where the corners of her mouth are, is to go pretty much almost straight down from where the pupils are. So you see that I've got these two dashes here on the eye line, which represent where her pupils are. I'm going over the top of those and then go straight down from the pupils and you almost get where the corners of the mouth should be. Although Rebecca's mouth is slightly smaller than that. Um, and then, yeah, so that's what I pretty much end up with. What I'm going to do is close this little demo document that I made and actually open up a kind of stripped down version of the actual original painting. And this is what one of my proportion layers will typically look like. I use a pencil You'll see it's much more sketchy because that's what I do. I'm literally sketching line out, um, one line after the, over the other and I'm making sure that it will look right. And I will spend a long time on this part. It's very bare bones. It seems very basic, but I'll spend anything from 45 minutes to an hour and a half, sometimes two hours, just doing these basic lines because I'm laying out the, the absolute foundations of the entire painting, where things should go, where the hand is where the eyes are, um, how big the mouth is, all these various things that make up somebody's face. And if you're doing portrait painting, getting somebody's face right in terms of symmetry, in terms of eye size, in terms of nose shape, in terms of mouth shape, and say um, that how wide the lips are, um, or how narrow they are, and all these sorts of things, the shape of the chin, all these things make up what we see as a face. And if one of those things is slightly off, maybe if one eye is slightly too high or too low, if the nose is a bit too narrow or wide, it can throw off the look of that person, capturing the look of that person. So for me, doing the proportions on a portrait is very, very crucial. And you actually see on this document, this actual uh, version of it I did for the painting, that put a few more details in there. I've got the um, bridge of the nose, the shape, the slight shape there, each line for the nostrils, um, and the sort of shape of the eyes underneath and lines there for the individual fingers. It's a little bit more detail there. Um, lines for the top lip, line for the bottom lip. And that's, I'm laying out a map of where my, um, how my next, what I work for, for my next layer. And that's for doing the pencil sketching. 
So once I've actually drawn the proportions, the first thing I'll do with this layer afterwards is actually drop the opacity down to 20% to make it into a very faint sort of ghost version of that. And then create a separate layer underneath for the pencil sketching. So let's bring that up. And that's what my pencil sketch would typically look like. And I would draw this on top of the proportions and it would help me, uh, the proportions is helping me make sure that when I'm drawing all this detail, I'm sticking to the proportions that things are going to be in the right place and all that sort of stuff. I'm just going to hide the proportions layer. And this is kind of what it ends up looking like. I'm just going to go in 100% and just show you some of the detail I go to. So that's drawing, obviously, the eyes there, the shape of the eyes, eyelashes, eyebrows, the shape of the nose along the bottom. And the piercing she's got there on her nose and the piercing under her lip there, her mouth, the shape and width and height of her mouth there, how wide her bottom lip is, the teeth in her mouth, obviously. Looking at her hand, we've got things like the tattoo. I'll even go in so far as to try and draw the tattoo as close as it is as I can make out, as it is from the photo. The ring on her finger, looking at the other hand, the tattoo down the side of that hand, the ring on that hat finger there come back out a little bit and then when it comes to hair I'll try and draw sketch as much of the detail in hair that I can and that's usually where the hair folds or individual strands that add to the detail and all this sort of stuff and you know that sort of stuff. One of the other things that I also do with this layer is to draw um, not just the detail on the face and all, all the things that make up the photo itself but I will also do sort of fainter sketchier lines in various areas of the photo. And what I mean by that is, if I just select the pencil tool and I put it in red, I'm just going to go over some of these lines that were already on there and show you what lines I'm talking about. You'll see on her forehead here, we actually have this line. Oh, sorry, do that again. We've got this line coming down here and that line there. And then I've also, for on her nose here, I've got this line and on her cheek, I've got this line. And all across her face and also on her hands here, have these various lines and what these are is where there is um, edges in shadow or in highlights and the whole point of this part of the um, sketch is I'm also not just drawing detail for me I'm mapping out short shading areas this is like a shade map for me so when I come to later on and I'm airbrushing in the highlight on her cheek or across her forehead there I'm, I can use these lines on this layer to actually help me make sure that my shading is also in proportion, is in the right general areas. Um, and that's the other thing that I do on this layer. And then the final step in terms of laying the basics out is to take a photo and break it down into basic layers. Now what I do here is, um, for example, what I would this photo in particular, I would break down into probably about six layers. So what layer one would be the face. That would be the face itself. So let me bring up this layer, which I've already done that. Now, what I would do is create a new blank layer, go to the selection tool, and then use the polygon tool set to add. And I would then, by zooming in at 100%, I would then click around, say, the bottom of her chin. Click, 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 going right around the bottom there. And then once I get into an area where, um, for, for example, her face is behind her hand, you can be a bit more free there, I'd actually draw out a basic shape for her face, leaving me a selection mask where I can then paint inside it and not touch, go outside the edges. And I would fill it with the most common shade of colour in that area. So what I've gone for here is quite a bold skin tone. Um, you'll notice the rest of her face is actually quite bright overall, but what I've gone for here is a more middle ground skin tone. Filled it in with that area, and that's one basic layer. And then go, right, what, what, which layer would I need next? The next one for me would probably be the hair. The hair would need to go on its own layer, and I'd put that layer above the face because her hair is in front of her face. So that's what I've done there, and I would then, again, using the same technique, create a new empty layer, use the polygon selection tool, and click around a general area, and then fill that in with the most common shade of red in her from her hair. The thing about hair as well is a little quick tip. 
is when I'm creating a uh, filling in a general area, this area of her hair with a, of a color, I don't worry so much with hair because I will later, for, for a very long and tedious process, is pretty much use a pencil tool in that color and sketch around the outside and actually fill in the rest so you get more of a um, hair texture around the edges rather than it being sharp edges on the hair itself, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly. Um, the next thing I would do is I've made the face into its own layer. I've made the hair into its own layer. I would then take the two hands and make them their own layers as well. So her left hand, it will go into 100% again. You'll see that using the polygon selection tool, I've clicked around the edges of following my pencil sketch and actually clicked around the whole hand itself. And this takes a couple of minutes to do going around the whole hand itself and, I'll just go and do that bit by bit and go around and round and round, add, add, do a bit, add to it and map out the shape of a hand following my line work, my pencil sketch. And once I've created, uh, made this selection mask around the whole hand, is again, then fill it in with a kind of overall skin colour that is in that area. And you see I've gone for quite a dark skin tone there. I'm not sure why I did that originally. Um, I think the hand generally now looking at it is a lot lighter than that. But obviously, you can fix that later with the shading. And this is how I work. I create this, this selection mask and then I'll fill it in. And once I've done that, I've got that there already set in stone. And I'll do the same again for her other hand. Mapping out, following my line work, clicking around the edges. Um, and that's what I would do. That's how I create these basic layers. Once I've done that, I'll then, for example, um, I'll then make a layer behind the face for her neck. So her neck area here would have its own layer behind the face, and I can shade that separately. So I can do all the dark area behind her face. And then I would make another layer behind everything, which would be for her hood, um, and then for her shoulders there. And I can do that as its own separate layer there. And then I might do one at the very end of the painting, I'll create a separate layer for the background colour. And these are the steps that I take for laying the groundwork for the rest of the painting. So that's doing the proportion line work, making sure you're mapping out the size and proportions of everything on the canvas. Then there's the pencil sketch where you take that a step further, adding detail, following your proportion map so everything works and everything's in the right place. And then the next step is to break your image down into basic layers and you're kind of filling those areas with a, an overall colour and we can work from later. And that's how I um, do my drawing um, from the early steps. So if you like this video um, and you leave any comments, please keep them constructive. And if you do like it, please let me know and hopefully I'll make one that goes further from here in the near future. Thank you.